to this uh, seminar today, and I'm Martin Hall, Vice-Chancellor of the University of Salford, and it's a pleasure to welcome you all here. Um, I was very reassured by that and, 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 and other uh, videos that I've seen about the Media City Project and artist reconstructions, because one thing I've come to notice is that every time I've ever seen uh, an artist's impression or a reconstruction of Salford, it always has a blue sky. Uh, and the sun is always shining, and of course today proves that this is actually the case uh, and that it never rains this side of the River Irwell. Um, so welcome to today, which I think is an important set of, uh, of, of opportunities, um, and it's my pleasure to be sharing the platform today with uh, Paul Newman, the Head of Communications at Peel Media, uh, and also with Richard Deverell, uh, the Chief Operating, Operating Officer from BBC North, and also f with many others of you in the audience um, Fellow Vice Chancellors, academics from other universities, uh, partners uh, from the media industry, others from the BBC, from Peel, um, to really have what I, I know will be a very important discussion around the opportunities of this extraordinary project. The thing that's really driving us at the University of Salford at the moment um, in our thinking about this, because as you know, we've made a very substantial commitment. Um, to this project in terms of the amount of space that we, we, we have here just across the keys there. The thing that's really exercising me and my colleagues at the moment is the opportunities for partnership. Um, it's very apparent to us that this is an extraordinary opportunity uh, to bring universities from not only the Northwest but also across the North and potentially from other parts of the world um, into collaboration with each other uh, for mutual benefit for all of us. This is not a project, this is not an exercise owned by the University of Salford in any way at all. We have no exclusive rights uh, to representation on this site, nor do we want them. Uh, we want to open up opportunities for construction, uh, constructive working together. Um, and um, it's become very clear to me that that's not only an opportunity for Greater Manchester, uh, it's an opportunity for the country and internationally. I was recently overseas uh, doing what all vice chancellors have to do, which is to track down our alumni in various parts of the world. Uh, and we, are a we have a very good relationship with RMIT in Melbourne. And they're immediately taken with the opportunities uh, for them that the presence of this project gives in the sort of world collaboration that they think in Melbourne is going to be important for them uh, as they take things forward. They were immediately attracted to the presence of the brand of the BBC because they could immediately relate the work that they want to do with the Australia Broadcasting Commission, uh, Corporation straight through to the BBC brand. So this is an opportunity for all of us to really do something different uh, that benefits for all of us um, in um, our, our 
in our programs, in what we want to do with our teaching, in what we want to do with our continuing professional development, in the way that we want to take forward our research and our particular opportunities. So welcome everybody uh, to the session to discuss that. And, and I hope that once we've um, heard, uh, well I know in fact that once we've heard from Paul and from Richard uh, and we open this up uh, for general comments and discussion, we'll get a lot out of this in terms of the ways that we can move forward um, in the future. We're not coming here with any fixed ideas or fixed propositions about how these partnerships should work. It's an, it's an open book uh, when it comes to mapping those out. We just have a commitment to the notion of partnership as far as Media City is concerned. I think all of us would recognize that one of the paradoxes of the digital world that we live in is that at the very same time uh, that we begin to get decent bandwidth eventually everywhere, at the very same time that we have these huge opportunities for distributed working, uh, whether it's distributed teaching, distributed research, or distributed organization, just at that very st same time, place becomes even more important. And there is this extraordinary correlation between the expansion of the digital world and the rise in property prices in place like, places like New York and London and other major cities of the media industry. And at the very same time that everybody can work virtually, everybody values more and more uh, the necessity of actually getting together face to face. And I think a lot of people who have been thoughtful about these things have realized that the vision that people tended to have uh, in the 1990s, which of course is prehistory as far as the internet is concerned, but the vision that people had in the 1990s that we would all somehow by now uh, be working in redwood forests um, with streams trilling at the bottom of our gardens, never having to have the necessity to commute into a city, it hasn't turned out like that. Um, because place making has become just as important, as even more important in the digital world uh, as it was in the pre-digital world. And clearly what we have here um, in Media City is an extraordinary place simply because of the extent of investment. Uh, and you can see that all around you and, and others will be taking you on a little bit of a tour um, using the extraordinary 300 or well, almost 180 degree opportunities that we actually have here in the compass room to look around at this development. So I think what we will see happening is that Media City will serve as a magnet uh, for making those partnerships real simply because it's a place that we can get together. Um, and there are still key opportunities uh, for that uh, and some of the things you'll be hearing about are the, the opportunities in the Media Enterprise Centre um, where uh, it's still pretty well an open book uh, for organisations to become in, in, in quite flexible ways uh, a part of that. Um, it's also, in, when we think about partnership, we can also think about partnership without potentially physical relocation or letting or leasing on the premises. We can think about project-based partnership uh, and we're very proud at the University of Salford to be part of one of those partnerships in the FIRM project which is funded by a combination of research councils here in the UK which has brought us together in partnership with universities like Lancaster, Goldsmiths, MIT and Cambridge um, in um, very specifically packages of research funded work. Those sorts of partnerships of course centre on the place of Media City uh, with what will be key support but without in fact the necessity for those universities uh, to relocate anything at all to get the benefit of place out of it. So we think this is a great time to be having these discussions and looking at the opportunities. Um, I think all of us um, from the higher education sector here, and I was slightly concerned by aspects of the, um, of the Peel Media video as to whether or not uh, Peel Media perceives academics as sort of purple fluffy uh, uh, animated objects. And maybe that is the way that we actually appear to the world and we have to demystify uh, that view of us. Uh, although maybe that's not such a bad thing to be, but anyway, a sort of Smurf-like figure. Um, but the, the thing I think that, that we can offer is um, what essentially boils down to a massive idea machine. Because all of us, of course, uh, have active researchers uh, who are able to let their imaginations fly in their research work. But we also, of course, have large numbers of very smart, driven students, um, uh, particularly postgraduate students, who are doing really extraordinary work in the, their research and pushing the boundaries uh, in new ideas that they're doing within the university environment. And I think universities, and particularly publicly funded universities, because that's what we are, 
um, are machines uh, for generating these new research ideas. The exciting thing for me about the digital age is that we are now miles away from the old innovation, closed innovation models of the drug, com the drug companies uh, characterized, uh, where uh, massive overuse of patenting and protection of intellectual property was used to contain and control ideas. That isn't the way that we work these days. We work in a far more open innovation environment uh, where universities uh, have large numbers of students um, who are constantly generating those ideas. And as far as what we can offer to industry uh, and to the digital industries in partnership, uh, we can offer that sort of factory of ideas for them uh, to work with uh, as we try and look for new applications that add value, create jobs, create wealth, create opportunity uh, for economic development um, here in the Northwest and in the country as a whole. And that's, I think, what we can bring to the table um, in uh, a site and an extraordinary set of opportunities like these. I think those of us in the university sector would also be wanting to push our partners um, in, the, in the industry sector to think beyond the immediate and to think about the opportunities that might lie in the future uh, for the use of uh, digital facilities in totally different ways. One of the things that I'm excited about, because at the University of Salford we happen to have um, a large health and social care faculty, is looking to the future as the costs of health provision become unaffordable outside a primary health care base, to look to the future and to ask the question how the sorts of digital technologies that are now exciting people in the broadcast media are going to translate into health care as more and more people have to be cared for at home and as that caring more and more comes to rely on ubiquitous broadband access, allowing hosts of new opportunities to manage people uh, with chronic illnesses, uh, people who are old and who have to live at home in all sorts of ways that at the moment uh, are not imagined. Those, I think, for the digital industries are the sorts of opportunities for lateral thinking uh, that we can offer through effective partnerships uh, in uh, the higher education and research sector. Those are the sorts of ideas, I think, that are beginning to float around. And what we'd hope to do through partnership working um, is to create opportunities uh, for those ideas to realize themselves, to crystallize, um, but also uh, to be translated uh, into opportunities uh, for the private sector and the commercial sector and the new digital industries to actually create economic value from them. So that, that's enough for me. And I, I think at this particular point, uh, um, I'm going to hand over to Paul. Uh, we'll come back to some of these points, uh, obviously, in the uh, question and answer session and the discussion that we have um, prior to lunch. But Paul. Thank you.